Hi, I'm Natasha Antonioni with Austin Life, and today we are doing a Halloween edition. But first, we've been promising you an update, so I kind of wanted to show you where we're at, which is not where we want to be. We hired this landscaper and gave him half of a chunk of a large deposit and he vanished on us. I know there is a silver lining because Dario, my husband, has taken over the project. Even though he wasn't planning on doing that, he's probably gonna do it even better. So check out the pool that he did with a crew on his own. So what do you think? Anyway, there's more to come. So far, we've planted 23 trees. We've done landscaping around all the edge of the property. There's a whole mountainside that still needs to get done and eventually a two-story office kid space that's gonna happen over there. In the meantime, to make it usable and intentional, we will put a basketball hoop in because the neighborhood kids will come over and play on that thing when my kids are like in the house doing their homework. So does anybody out there have a contractor story as well? There's always a story with contractors, as we know. Leave it in the comments below. So come check out some Halloween decor for this upcoming Halloween weekend and party that we're having over here. So for me, it's always about like, how do you keep it elevated and elegant for something like Halloween? So I basically took some found objects that we had around the house, a couple of skulls from a trip to Mexico, some tree branches, an old black vase and candlestick holder, and some candles. And then dressed it up with some pumpkins from the grocer, and then found these beautiful feather pumpkins from Hearth and Home, which we covered in our Terrytown video, and just kind of put them together. So the things that I think make this work is I took a couple of iterations, but it's all about the spacing and the height. I had a lot of pumpkins in here originally, and then I broke it up, made some space, and the reason why we wanna do that with different heights and creating space is that we're mimicking the way that nature works. And then the other thing is that I had everything kind of low originally and realized with these gigantic pendants, we needed to fill the space a bit. So went outside and cut some branches, bought some leafy branches from the grocery store and hot glued them on with these crows from Michael's. So I'm typically like an all white pumpkin girl. So I needed to have my white pumpkins. So this will be the island where we have the buffet of food. I added the spiders to make the kids happy. And you could keep it for a grown up party, just kind of simple and elegant like this. I brought in the dark pumpkin so that it marries well to the other centerpiece and added some leaves to give it that organic vibe. And if you wanna make it more kitty and kid friendly, I have this little scary guy that can be stuck on top. So depending if you're going grown up style or if you're going kid style, you can go either way with it. We're having a party here for Halloween. It's just a few families from the neighborhood, no trick or treating with COVID this year. So we'll have a candy table and make it a little bit more festive. So to bring the kid flavor into it, we have a couple of fun crafts for you to enjoy with the kiddos. Hope you enjoy. For this craft, you're going to need a frame, spooky fabric, spiders, and a skeleton hand, and a glue gun, and a pair of scissors. Just stretching the fabric until you see a shape that you like and glue it down. Don't worry about the edges because you can always just cut them right off afterwards. Now we'll flip it over. using black yarn, a scissor, and painter's tape for this next spider web.
Well, happy Halloween and make sure to like and subscribe below because we have videos coming out every single Tuesday. We'll see you soon.